right, well, good morning, everybody. Once again, happy 2021 to you. Look at your neighbor and say, you look better than you did last year. Go ahead and tell them. Yeah. And for my first joke of 2021, I haven't seen y'all all year long. All right, yeah, there you go. It just gets better and better. Welcome to everybody who's watching online. Thank you so much for joining us. If you want to look in the uh, comment section or up above, you can see the message notes. And if you here today would like to get out your message notes, we are going to jump right into a brand new series I am really excited about that is called It's Time to Run. We're going to jump into that, and you can, uh, you can look at the QR code in front of you if you want to do the online message notes thing. But I, I tell you, I asked some different folks on social media to let me know what your favorite New Year's meme was. Like as we were getting into the new year, like what was your favorite meme? Because I know a lot of people were really excited to see the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, however that found you. And so I was asking, and I think the one that kind of got everybody, like the one that it seemed like most people were thinking was this one right here. I don't know if you saw this one, but it was, you know, the end of 20, uh, 2020 was like, yay. And I was like, wait, is it going to happen some more? I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And I don't know about you guys, but as I got closer to midnight on 2020, I was getting so many text messages saying things like, ooh, we made it, you know, and, and okay, all right, yeah, yay. And, and I honestly wanted to tell some of them, what do you really think is going to happen? <laughs> do you think that it's all going to be different? And, and I think maybe people were going, yeah, of course it is, right? And, and honestly, as we got ready to move in, which is uh, to the next year, which is kind of the theme of our, our message today, is I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Man on Fire. I don't know. It's uh, Denzel Washington, Dakota Fanning. And, and I was really, I don't know if you've seen this before, but uh, Denzel Washington is, he is a uh, bodyguard, and Dakota Fanning is a little girl that he's protecting from getting kidnapped, all that. And there's this larger narrative, but there's a smaller one. And I was thinking about 2021 like this, and that is that she was a swimmer. And he was watching her swim, and she was actually one of the fastest ones in the water, but she always came in last place. And so she was asking him one day, like, why, why am I always the last one? And she, he was like, you're really the fastest. But it's like when you're on the block getting ready to jump in the water, when the gun goes off, you hesitate. It scares you. And while you're trying to figure out what's going on, everybody else is jumping in the water. And no matter how fast you are, you can't catch up. Well, that's what I was thinking about when it comes to 2021 is so many people were like, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. And then it got here and so many folks have been like frozen. Like instead of thinking, yay, it's a chance to jump in, it's, wait a minute, <laughs> where are the murder hornets at? Okay, are they, they're not coming back, right? You know, there's a new strain of, of, of a coronavirus. They're, they're, I mean, what, what's going on? I don't know if there's going to be more of the same. And so I just want to maybe just challenge you with some things today and, and really try to figure out not just what did we learn from, from last year, but what are we going to do? this year. And so uh, I want to say this, that I don't know about you, and if you're taking notes, there may have been so many different things, but I don't, I learned some unexpected lessons from 2020, and I want to see what God would say to us as we get into this new year. So if you're taking notes, one of the first things, kind of the unintended lessons from 2020 was, I didn't know him the way I thought. Like, was that, I don't know if that was you, but I, like, I really thought I had a good relationship with God, and I did, but then we stopped having church on Sunday mornings, right? We went online, and, and then, then I wasn't able to talk to a lot of people and do a lot of things. And I started going, wait a minute. I don't know if I know God quite like I thought I did. Maybe I need to get a little bit closer to God. I don't know if you would agree with that. I'll tell you another one that I learned, and that is this, that I need him more than I thought I did. That was one of the lessons I learned in 2020 was I, I can't just have a Sunday love affair with Jesus. Like, like I, I need a relationship with him because I, if you'd have told me, okay, now let's just back up and start over again. If you'd have told me that we would stop having in-person service for like six weeks, I would have said, why? Did like a water main, main break? You know, did the power go out? Why? I, no one would have told me that we would have done it like on purpose. And, and I don't know about you, but for the first two or three weeks online, like it was amazing. Like, I don't know what time you get up on Sunday morning. I get up at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning, right? That does come twice in a day for some of y'all. It really does, okay? But I, I, would, I would get up early. I'd be here super early. I was sleeping until 9.15 on Sunday morning because we don't stream until 9.30. I got 15 whole minutes to brush my teeth and get to the living room. I mean, it was amazing. 
But then, all of a sudden, we're not doing it. And for the first two or three weeks, I was like, man, this is how you do this. This is how the heathens live, all right? <laughs> that was a joke, okay, all right? But after a while, I was like, man, I need more than this. And then I'll tell you, maybe the biggest lesson I learned in 2020, which is why we're going to be doing this series, is that the journey closer to God wasn't as simple as I thought it would be. I just thought, well, you know what? I just start reading my Bible a little bit more. I pray a little bit more. I'm, I'm going to get close. But it was nowhere near that simple. There was a lot of things that got in my way. I don't know about you. There was all kinds of things. I, th now, there was, you know, not be able to come to church kind of got in my way. Um, not, you know, everything kind of shutting down kind of got in my way. Fear of what was going to go on kind of got in my way of getting closer to God. Homeschooling got in my way. Like, I love my kids differently than I did in 2020, more in some ways. I know them more than I used to in some ways. Uh, I, I, I got to where my relationship with my wife would get in my way because I wanted to make sure I was loving her. You know what the biggest thing that got in my way was? Myself. I, I got in my own way, getting closer to God. And so as I, I don't know about you, but as I was looking at, you know, time getting ready to switch over from December 31st of 2020 to January, I was, I do this every year. I, I think about the year. What did I learn? And I learned a lot of things, but what was I going to take into the new year? And with that, I want to tell you what maybe some of our, like our life verse was for 2020. And then I want to see what God would maybe say to us. Here, here was maybe your life verse. Habakkuk 2 said this, oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? and you will not hear. Praise the Lord, right? How about this? Or cry out to you, violence, election stuff, pandemics, stimulus checks, all this stuff, and you will not save. Come on now, God. Why do you make, why do you make me see iniquity, and why, don't, why do you look idly at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. Does that not sound like 2020 to you? I mean, if you were ever to write it down, because that's kind of what was happening in Habakkuk's life at the time. He was sitting there looking and going, man, everything's going wrong, and it's actually going worse than it should. So God, I'd, I'd love for you to do something. And look what God said. The Bible said, the Lord answered and said, look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I even told you about it. So I think what God was saying to him is, listen, I'm doing so much more than you realize. So the goal is not to just sit and complain and think about what was, but instead, think of, try to figure out what I'm doing and get in on it. And so he, then he went on to say this, and this is the series text uh, that we're going to be looking at. As he said this, he said, the Lord answered again and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. So he may run who reads it. For the vision awaits its appointed time. If he seems slow, if it seems slow, wait for it, for it will surely come, and it will not delay. And so what I was looking at, and I was reading this verse, I started to realize that I don't want to make any New Year's resolutions this year, okay? Because you know why? They don't work, all right? I don't know. You can, if you've ever had a New Year's resolution, don't tell any of us because we won't believe you, okay? They, they don't seem to work. I don't want to just make any more do-better cases. Instead, what I want to do is what God says to do, and that is, first of all, identify the vision. Then make it plain, simplify it. And then, for heaven's sake, let's do it. And so what I want to challenge all of us as a church to do, is I've been praying for us as we were moving into this new year, is I want to challenge you to do something. Instead of having the, the 20 different things we're going to do this year, I'm going to lose you know, the, the, the COVID-19 you know, or the COVID-99, and, and, and instead of doing these other things, and I'm going to read 100 books this year, or I'm, I'm going to be nice to people this year, instead of doing any of that, what if we just said, I'm going to do something very different? Because I think we, we overestimate what we can do in one year, but we underestimate what we can do through a lifetime of faithfulness. And so if you haven't already set up what you're going to do this year, if you haven't already done it, then go ahead and put all that other stuff off to at least June, okay? And I want us to do something. So he said this. He said, you've got to identify the vision, and then you need to simplify it. So instead of 10 things, what if we did one thing, and then run with it? And so this is what, this is the big idea, and we're going to build on this each week in this series. But what if this year we made a decision that as a church, I'm going to run toward God? This year, I'm going to make a plan that I'm going to get as close to God as I possibly can. Because here's the thing, there's more. There's more to God than you have already encountered, than I've already encountered. But we've got to be so careful that we don't hear that so much that it just goes right over the top of our head. 
Like if you hear that, you may be like, yay, that's great. Now what? <laughs> what's, what's next? Sure, I know, about, I know about God. I know about the love of God. I got saved once. Can we do something else? Well, here's the thing. What if I told you that there is more to God than you've ever experienced? That there's, there's further places that you can, the Bible says that up in heaven there's four living creatures all around the throne of God and that they, they continually turn and every time they do they say, holy, holy, holy. The, the, the oldest Greek translations say they said it eight different times. They would say, holy, holy. It's like every time they turned they saw a different part of God and were surprised at how amazing he was. And then finally they got so excited and they would say, is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. And according to the Bible, they've been doing that for like a really long time. And still, every time they turn, they see, it's like a kaleidoscope. Every time they turn, they see a new aspect of God they never saw before, and they're continually amazed at how big God is. So how do we think that we could have been on this earth for 30 and none of your business years <laughs> and think that we have seen all that there is of God? There's so much more. And that's what Paul was trying to tell the early church in, in Ephesus. Now, Ephesus was kind of the who's who church of the early church in the first century. Some of the most prominent people of the early church lived in Ephesus. Paul lived there for a time. Timothy lived there. John, the guy who said he was Jesus' best friend, <laughs> according to him, and he wrote the book of Revelation, all that for a while. John lived in Ephesus. Uh, John moved Mary, the mother of Jesus, to Ephesus for a season. So if you wanted to know anything about Jesus, go to Ephesus. Those guys can tell you, right? And John is saying, I mean, Paul is saying, listen, you've experienced a lot, but there's so much more. And I want to tell us as a church, and if you're watching online, you're part of our church community today, I want to tell you, you've experienced a lot of there is of God. But can I tell you, there's so much more. And as your pastor, I want to lead us in a season of just seeing how much of God can we experience in 2021. So the, the name of our series is, is It's Time to Run. We're going to identify the vision that God has for us. Then we're going to simplify it. We're going to simplify it to just two words. I'm going to run toward God. And then I just want to see how close to God can we get. Because that's what Paul is telling the church in Ephesus when he says this. He says, I pray that from God's glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Now listen to what he says. And he says, and then may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should. In other words, he's not saying that they do, but they should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is not too great though it is too great to fully understand, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. And so what he's saying is, is he's saying there's so much more. But here's the challenge, and this is what I want to share with you that is my challenge so many times as well, and that is that if we're not careful, we experience one kind of love of God, and then that's it. We never go any further. We, this is the kind of love of God that we experience. And if you don't know this verse, you should really learn it. It's pretty cool. John 3, 16. This is how God loved the world. That he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. How many ever heard that verse before, right? If not, you just did, so put your hand up. Absolutely, yeah. We, we've all, so isn't that amazing? It's like Jesus loved us so much that he didn't just shout his love from heaven. Like he came down. He lived among us, and he, he was here. He experienced all the things, and then he died on a cross, fulfilling the righteous judgment of the law to set us free from sin. He rose again, and then he said, all you got to do is receive it. You can't earn it. All you can do is receive it. Isn't that amazing? But here's the thing. For, for many of us, that's the only part of God's love we've ever experienced. But there's so much more. And, I, and I've got an illustration for you that is not going to make sense, maybe, but if you'll hand it to me real quick. This is the best I got, okay? This is my million dollar illustration. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before. I hate these so bad because they're so hard to fold. But I was thinking about this, and many of us, we experience God in, in one kind of way, okay? Imagine this is flat, okay? Because it won't stay flat. But imagine it's flat. So we experience the love of God. Like, that, that's amazing, and that's awesome, and that's great. But can we just be really honest for a moment? How, how much does that help us after we get saved in our daily life? Like, continually celebrate his love absolutely but then when we go home 
and we ask our spouse what's wrong, and he or she says, nothing, I'm fine. You know what that means? That means just walk right back out the door, buddy, because you're in trouble, and you don't yet deserve to know what's wrong. That's what I'm fine means, all right? Or you go to work, and everybody's whispering that they're going to close down a department, and it might be yours. How does that help you? I mean, that, that, that says that you get to go to heaven one day, and that says that you can receive, and you can celebrate that, but, but now what? And, and so sometimes we, we, we say things like, well, I just, I don't know what else I can experience in God's love, or, I, or I'm just not experiencing. I hear this all the time as a pastor. Well, I just, I just don't have the feels like I used to have. And my relationship with God has kind of gotten cold and stagnant. It's because you received the love of God, but that's all you received. And so your, your relationship with God is very one-dimensional. But he didn't stop there. The next verse, he said that God didn't go through all the trouble sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help. Help with what? Help with whatever you need. And what Paul was saying is he said, listen, you've experienced God in one way, and that's amazing, and we should celebrate that forever, but there's so much more. God is not a one-dimensional love. It doesn't say that he does love. It says that he is love. So God isn't one-dimensional, but actually, as you start to dig in, he's actually four-dimensional, and that there's so much more to God that you don't see. And so when you look at him from one angle, you go, well, that's great. I love God. That's awesome. And, and I get to say, you say, but, but there's more. And when you look at him at a different angle, he gets bigger. At a different angle, he gets even bigger. At a different angle, he gets even bigger. And so what you find is you find you're constantly discovering something new about God. And so when I say that this year we need to run toward God, we're going to have a busy year. Because every time we find something out new about God, he opens up a whole other area. Did you know that I can do this? Wow, that's amazing. What did you know I could do this? Wow, that's even more amazing. And so I wonder if we'll find ourselves in December of 2021 like the living creatures in heaven going, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty because every time we turn, we see a new part of God we never saw before and it never gets old. Serving God isn't boring if you're constantly looking at the different facets of the love of God. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take the journey with me to say how many different parts of God can we see in a year? And so make sure you, you understand with me as much as, hey, this is actually working. This is the Holy Spirit helping me. with It took me an hour to fold this thing the first time. But what I, and see, look, look, there it is, okay? There it is. But what I want you to do is, is I want to challenge you. This year is going to be a year of challenge. It's going to be a year where I'm going to ask you to, to kind of step outside of your comfort zone a little bit and go, what if God is bigger than I ever thought before? Because yes, he, he is the God who saves us, and we're never going to stop celebrating that. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. You know, we, that, that's enough, right? He doesn't have to do anything else for us. But the amazing thing is, is he's chosen to. And that day upon day, week upon week, throughout our series, we're going to continue to build until we start going, man, I never even thought God could be that big in my life. And so what I want to do is I just want to challenge you just for a moment to go, okay, what if there's more of God than I can ever imagine? And Paul is trying to say, if you realize that God's love is four dimensions at least, it's not one dimension but 4D, and there's so much more, then does that... Does that encourage you that this year we've got so much to do? And then what if God was bigger than you could ever imagine? That means even that thing that you haven't turned over to God, because even though you wouldn't say it out loud on the inside, you wonder if he could really do something about it, this is the year to finally get free. This is the year to experience him like you never had before. This is the year that God wants to do something amazing. And so we're going to identify the vision, and that is that we're going to run toward God. Then we're going to simplify it as much as we can, and then we're going to run as fast as we can. I want to show you the four aspects of God that we're going to learn about throughout this year so we can see that God is bigger than we could ever imagine. So if you're taking notes, he said that the width, the length, the depth, and the height, the first thing we're going to look at is the width of God's love, is that I'm going to run toward God's capacity to realize that God can handle so much more than I ever thought he could. That, that God, God, God doesn't have a weight limit. You know what I mean? God doesn't have this moment where he's like, ah... Not experienced that one before. Let me get back with you on that, right? That no matter what it is, God can handle it. And that's what Paul is saying. He said, listen, you received God's love through salvation, and that's awesome. But did you know he can also handle your stuff? Like, you don't get saved and then go, now let me go figure me out. No, no, no. He says, bring to me everything, and let me show you. Like, the only way you're ever going to figure out who you are is not by reading a bunch of self-help books, but it's by getting close to Jesus, because only the maker can show you what the vessel was made for. And so the capacity that he has is to carry everything that you're going through. The Bible says it like this. It says that the Lord is compassionate and merciful. 
slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love, capacity. That he does not punish us as our sins, for all of our sins, and does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. His unfailing love toward those who fear him is great and the height of the heavens, as the heights of heavens above the earth. And he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. So let me ask you this question, how far away is east? The question would be, well, where are you coming from? <laughs> or, or where are you going to? Nowhere. Just how far? That's impossible to answer. Okay, well, let me ask you this one. How far is the west? Same answer. And so what, what God's trying to say is what you don't understand is there is no limit. There is no limit to what I can take care of. There, there, there is no problem that you're going to have that I can't handle. And so, yes, celebrate me for your salvation, but now, guess what? There's a whole other facet, and that is whatever you're dealing with, I can carry it. Jesus didn't say, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden up to a point. He just said, come. I got it. And, and, and that's one of the things I love about God. The, the other um, couple years ago, I was getting ready to get on a, an airplane, which is already a bad story, all right? And I was getting ready on an airplane, and they had to switch us to a different one. I'm not exactly sure why, but they did. And I was fine until we were getting ready to get on the airplane. And before you could get on the airplane, they brought a, a scale, and you had to weigh all of your carry-ons. And so I heard someone, about three people in front of me, go, oh, look, just why? Why are we doing this? Well, we want to make sure that it's not too heavy for, like, for us to take off. And so I was the first one to volunteer and say, listen, if it's that close, I'll wait for the next one, okay? <laughs> if you're having to measure, and it's between five or 10 pounds, if we're going to make it or not, I'm not in that big a hurry, okay? I'm, I'm fine. And literally, they asked a couple of people at the end of the line if they could put their luggage on another plane. And so I was just trying to hold my breath, thinking somehow that would save a couple pounds, you know? I, I wanted to make it home. And I don't know how many of us think, well, I can't trust God with everything, because I don't know if he can handle the last couple pounds of what I'm going through. Like, I'll, I'll trust God with my family, but I won't trust him with myself because I don't know if he can handle it because I got a couple of secret fears I haven't told anybody about. I, I'll trust God with my big issues, but not my little ones. Or I'll trust God with my little ones, but not my big ones. Well, here's the question. What, what did you keep from God this past year because you weren't quite sure that he was going to do something about it? What if this year you realized that, yes, he is the God of our salvation, but he's also the God of every single weight that holds you down. And he doesn't have a weight limit. But the, the capacity of God is what we're going to discover this year and that he is so much more able than we could ever give him credit for. And so we're going to lean on him like never before. The second thing is, is Paul said, not only is it the width, the capacity, but also the second thing is the length of God's love. Then we're going to run toward God's tenacity. In other words, there's no far, there's, there's nowhere you can run that you're going to outrun God. And I don't know about you, but there were times this year when I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do me, God, you do you, and, I, and I, didn't, I didn't mean it like that, but I just kind of started doing my own thing, and you know what I noticed is that God never, never said, okay, that's too far, I'm not going to go that far, but he chased me down, as far as his love never left me, he kept going, and he, and he kept going, he kept going, he's just tenacity, just continually, continually showing me his love, and showing me his patience, and showing me, and showing me, and honestly, that's how I got married, I don't know about you guys, how that worked for y'all, but it was just continual, consistent tenacity, just asking and asking and asking and asking. And finally, I said yes. <laughs> that is not true. Okay, all right. No, it's, you didn't have to ask me that many times, okay? Or maybe the other way around. But, but seriously, it was just consistently, consistently um, in, in our life that God is so faithful. And, and I don't know about you, but I can't tell you how many times I would have so much faith and then something else would happen, <laughs> And I would be like, okay, um, okay may maybe this time I have something to worry about. And every time God would, would kind of come back in my heart and go, no, you're still good. Do you know, I was sure that we were only going to be, as far as in service, we were only going to be closed for two weeks. Is that not hilarious? I mean, I mean, I was just like, surely just two weeks. And then when it looked like on the third week we were still going to be closed in-person services, I remember kind of going back to God in my prayer time going, okay, God, I, I could handle two weeks. But I don't know if I can handle three. And I just remember the, kind of God in my heart just went, it's okay. I still got you. Well, then week four came around. I was like, okay, God, I can handle three. I don't know if I can handle four. And now I'm a little embarrassed that I can't handle four. And I just remember God going, I got you. Well, then when we had to do homeschool, like I thought homeschool was great. And can I just be really honest with you? I thought, man, these homeschool parents, man, they got it made. It's so easy, all this stuff. Now, I never said that out loud because I wasn't stupid, but I, I thought it in my heart. 
Well, then we became homeschool parents, and I want you to know who the heroes are in this room, okay? Anybody who did that on purpose, okay? Like, they chose to do that. I learned really quickly, and every time I had to come back to God and go, God, are you big enough for this? Can you handle this? And I remember every time the love of God going, yeah, I got this too. You're never going to walk too far out. I'm not going to be there with you. Paul said it like this. He said, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And I think he had to remind us of that because if we're honest, maybe not God, but definitely us. Like, like think about this. Is there anything that could separate someone from your love? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and now it, it, it take a while, but eventually I do have a line. You cross that line, we're going to redefine our friendship, right? But, but for God, he says, does it mean that we no longer have his love if we have trouble or calamity? or if we're persecuted, or if we're hungry, or if we're in destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death? Like, is there a line? Is there a line that we go to that God says, I can't go there? I've never been there before, so I'm not sure. No, no, he said, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Why? Because of his love. Not just his salvation and love, which is amazing, but the 4D, experiential love of God that happens in our life. And he says this, he says, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation, not even cats. Isn't that amazing, all right? That's in the Brandon unauthorized version right there. Will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In other words, what he's saying is, is it doesn't matter. And you know what? I've talked to some people who said, you know, this year I walked away from God. No, I didn't deny my faith. But when I prayed and asked God not to get sick, I did. When I prayed and asked God that I wouldn't lose my job, I did. And so you know what? I kind of walked away a little bit. Can I tell you, if that was you, and maybe it wasn't that drastic for you, you didn't outrun God. You didn't outrun his ability to catch you and to find you. And so you know what we're going to do this year? Is we're going to identify the vision. Then we're going to simplify. We're going to make it as easy as possible. And then we're going to do it. And what I want to challenge you to do this year along with me is that this year I'm going to run toward God as much as I possibly can. I'm tired of just seeing God in one way, which is still amazing, but I want to realize that God is so much bigger than I could have ever imagined. And I want to run toward his capacity, big enough to handle whatever I go through, big enough that I want to run toward his tenacity that he never gives up on me. And here's, here's a big one, and this is the one I, I had to deal with a lot, is that I'm going to run toward the depth of God's love, which is to run toward his stability. Run toward his stability in my life. And what Paul is saying is he's saying, man, it's great when you realize how, how big God is and how, how long his, his love is that he never run him. But you know what? Sometimes you've got to go to the bottom. Sometimes you've got to go to the deepest darkness before you realize he's still there. Sometimes there's some things that you can't read about in a book. There's some things that you can't hear somebody else's story about. I used to think when I was younger that I wasn't going to go through any hard times. You know why? Because I was going to learn from everybody else's mistakes. <laughs> and I thought, that, this is how I'm going to save myself from trouble. And you know, it does work some, but there's some things you just can't experience. You can't, you can't understand until you experience it, like getting a brain freeze. I don't care how many times you tell someone it's a headache. No, no, until you experience your brain falling out of your head and hitting the ground, you don't know what it's like. Well, it's the same thing. Sometimes you have to experience the bottom to go, wait, God's still there. David said it like this. He said, even when the way goes through Death Valley, I will not, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. He said, even if I have to go through the worst thing imaginable, I can make it. Not because it's fun, but because you don't leave me. I don't know about you, but did you experience anything like that this past year? Dark moments that you'd only read about? You know, dark moments you only heard other people have to go through? But even in the dark moments, you realize God's there? It, it reminds me of, of David. He, he had these wonderful high moments, you know, becoming the second king of Israel and defeating Goliath and all these wonderful things. He also had some very dark days. And I've talked to different people who've had to walk through this and I've heard several people say there's nothing darker, nothing more terrible than the loss of a child. It's just unnatural. It's, just, it's terrible. It's horrible. And, you know, that we know of, David lost three children. He lost one because it was, he was murdered by another son. He lost another because Absalom tried to raise up against him. And, and, and he actually mutinied. It did take over the kingdom for a little while, so he had to be hunted down and killed, and that's not fun. But then the one that I wonder if maybe got him the most is the Bible said that 
his, his wife had a, had a child, and as soon as he was born, he started to struggle. And historians have went back and forth for, for years and years. We don't know exactly what was wrong with him. We just know as soon as he was born, he was at the point of death. And the Bible said that as soon as David heard that he was at the point of death, that he went to his version of what we would call the church. It was the tabernacle. And he began to pray and to intercede for his son, saying, God, I know you can. This would be a really good time for you to show people how amazing you are. It would be really great if you could just heal him. It would be awesome. And so this, he, was, he was really praying to have a really good prayer. But unfortunately, God chose to heal him by taking him to heaven. And the Bible said that when David, when, when his son passed away, his friends came to tell him, but they didn't know how to tell him because he was really tore up. He'd been there a couple days, he hadn't bathed, he hadn't eaten anything, he was really, really struggling. But when he saw them, he realized what was going on. And so when he found out, he got up, he went and took a shower, he went and comforted his wife, he ate, and then he started to worship God. And that, that confused them to no end, because they thought, well, if he's, if he's mourning while his son was alive, then how much worse is it going to be now that he's passed away? And so they go to David and they say, David, you've got to help us understand this. You're going through an even darker day than you were but yet you're worshiping God. And he said, while my son was still alive, there was the hope that God would answer my prayer my way. Now that he's gone, I know that he's okay. And I may not be able to be with him now, but I'll go with him one day. In other words, he's saying, when I got to the very bottom of my grief, God was still there. And so I could still talk to him. He was still worthy of worship. Sometimes you have to get all the way to the bottom to realize that God's love is not short. I don't know about you, I had a couple of times this past year when I experienced the new color of darkness like I'd never seen before. And that doesn't mean that everybody left me. I still had a wonderful church family. I had an amazing wife, but there's some roads you can only walk alone. And I remember a couple of times in 2020 that I got to the very end of where my thankfulness and looking at God in one dimension could take me. I got even further and deeper and darker than I ever thought I could. And you know what was amazing? Is that when I turned around and I was on a journey that my wife couldn't go with me, that you couldn't go with me, it was a journey of the dark night of my soul. I got to the very, very bottom. He was still there. And he said, I've already been here. So let me help you get out. What was 2020 like for you? Was it a new darkness? Can I tell you that even in the darkest moment, God is already there and he wants to help you out of it. And so in 2020, what we're, 2021, what we're going to do is that we're going to run after God. I want you to experience God like you never have before. You know why? Because we haven't even scratched the surface of what God can do. And so we're going to identify the vision. Let's run toward God. We're going to simplify it as much as possible. And then we're going to run all the way there because God has this amazing capacity for whatever we go through. He has this amazing tenacity that he continually searches for us. And then he is stable when everything else is shaking. He is so very stable. And then here's the last one, and we're going to pray. And that is that we also experience the height of God's love. That means we're going to run toward God's generosity. To realize that he is so much better to us than we give him credit for. I know um, my, uh, my family and I, we got to go see uh, some extended family for the past uh, few days. And when my, my girls met, up with their cousins, they're all comparing Christmas presents, right? You know, and as a parent, you're kind of going, I hope they got a little bit better Christmas than their cousins did. You know, <laughs> you know that's, that's horrible, but you're kind of like, you know. And, and so they were, they were comparing Christmas gifts and all this kind of stuff. And, and I heard one of my daughters say, you know, she went through a couple things she got and said, yeah, that's all I got for Christmas. Do you know I wanted to bust up in that conversation and be like, look, I know I wasn't supposed to be eavesdropping, but I was. That's all you got for Christmas, you know? And, and the reason why is because I got to thinking about not just the things that they got, but all of the continual gifts that they get. I'm that guy. I'm turning into that old guy, just like my father. You want to be like, you know what? You know what else you got? You got electricity for Christmas. That's what you got. You know, you, you got three square meals and snacks, okay? That's what you got. Ele you got electronics. You got a car that you get to ride in, personal valet called daddy. You know, whatever you want. You get the clothes that you want. I mean, I'm turning into an old man overnight. It's amazing. My, even my children inform me that I have gray hair. It's crazy. But I was just, I was getting so grandpa-like, you know, and be like, there's so many blessings that you have that you don't even think about. And then I'm telling you, it's like the Holy Spirit hit me right in my heart, and he went, yeah, it stinks, doesn't it? Oh, 
that ain't funny, Jason. You know, because you know what I was doing is I was I do this every year. I, I journal out the end of my year, and I was thanking God, and I was I was thanking God for these these big moments and and all these other things and. And, and the, the, you know, I, I never forget, you know, this past year having the, the baptism outside and getting to, 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 to be part of that. And then Christmas on, I mean, uh, Easter on the roof, wasn't that amazing? And we got sunburned, but it was okay, and we, it was fine. And, and all the, just, just all the big moments. And when I was done, I was like, man, thank you, God. And then that happened, and I was like, wow, you know what I didn't thank you for? Is your continual faithfulness. Is the very heartbeat that never quit, that I didn't lose a close family member this year in my immediate family, that, that we were able to all be here together. You know, not, not everyone got to celebrate that. All the little things. David said it like this. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, bless God. From head to toe, I will bless his holy name. Oh, my soul, bless God. Forget not a single blessing. Then he says, you know why? Because he forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases everyone. He redeems you from hell. He saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy. The paradise crown, he wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal. He renews your youth. You're always young in his presence. He said there's so many things to be thankful for. So don't just thank God for the Christmas presents, the big ones, but if you start to realize that, man, God is faithful in the little things, you'll never run out of things to thank God for. You take a deep breath right now. <sighs> Statistics say that 4,000 people over the planet didn't just take that breath. Wow. I'm so very thankful. Statistics say that throughout the world, at some point today, somewhere around 20, 30,000 people will breathe their last breath, something like that. You make it through the end of the day? Oh my goodness. God is so very good to you. And so you know what we're going to do this year? Is we're going to write the vision. We're going to make it plain. And then we're going to realize it is time to run. You know what I'm tired of? I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of carrying fear. I'm tired of, of turning on the news to find what I need to be afraid of today. I don't know, but I sure hope the murder, murder hornets are gone, because they really did bother me for a little while, because I, I don't even like them on good days, right? Now they put murder in front of them. I'm tore up. You know, I, you, know, you know why? Because I'm tired of having me be the answer to all my problems. And I'm going to still do the best I can, but I'm going to realize that my life is in His hands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run toward God this year, and I'm going to do everything I can to write that vision on the hearts of our church. And I'm going to do the very best I can to make it as simple as possible. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to run as fast as I can toward God. And I want to invite you to come with me this year. Because I think that there's moments and there's pieces and there's things, there's aspects that we've never seen before. And I'm ready to see them. And here's why. Paul said, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and fullness of power that comes from God. And as I was watching the clock switch over, I thought, you know what? That's my, that's my plan for this year, is I want to run toward God so that I can experience the fullness of life like I've never experienced before. You know what the fullness of life is? It's not a straight line. That's not life. That's prison. In prison, nothing ever changes. It's all the same. You go to bed, you get up, you have dinner, you have everything at the same time. You know what fullness of life is? It's the highs and the lows. The highs and the lows. The roller coaster of life. The difference is, is that you don't do it alone. That God is with you. And the power of life, which means no matter what we encounter, we can handle it. Because we have the power of God to do it. And how do we do it? by experiencing the love of Christ. What part of God's love do you need to focus on in 2020, 2021? Do you need to focus on the capacity of God? Have you got, have you got some pretty big needs that you walked into this year with? 
we, we had this idea that when 2021 happened that everything was going to be done. It'd be like the year of Jubilee in the Old Testament. All debts are canceled, all the things, it's going to be great. Then you walked into 2021 and you still had telemarketers calling you, right? School is still starting in a couple of days. Is that what you need to focus on? God, this year, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to see how much you can handle. I'm going to test that weight limit. I tell you, he's up to the challenge. Or do you need to experience the tenacity of God? God, I've walked so far away from you. Would you receive someone like me? Can I tell you that God's not mad at you? He's not changed his mind about you. Rather the opposite. Maybe the whole reason why you're here today is for him to say, welcome. Maybe it's, you need to experience the stability of God. Because walking into this year, you've got some serious decision, decisions to make. Maybe there's some serious fears that the enemy wants to put around you. Can I tell you, he's big enough to walk with you through the darkest valley. And, and even if you go there, you will not go alone. Or maybe it's time to start celebrating what he has done in your life. Do you know the person who has everything is not the person who has the most toys? <laughs> it's the person who finds stability and contentment in what they do have. And to realize, God, you've already blessed me. Whatever it is, let's run toward God this year and see what we can see. Let's pray together this morning. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your presence and your mercy. Lord, I'm so thankful that in moments like this, I realize that you are with us and you are for us. And Lord, I don't know exactly what you may be saying in the hearts and the minds of everyone here, but what I do know is that your love is not just one dimensional, but it is in every area. And in just a moment, God, we're gonna go back into a worship song. And I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, I just release you to maybe speak into an area of our life that we've been hiding. An area that we hoped we would leave behind, but we've carried with us. To realize maybe we carried it with us because it's time for you to heal us. It's time for us to experience your love and to realize that you are for us and not against us. Right now your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. What will you commit to God this year? Will you, will you join me and say, I'm gonna run after God like never before? I'm gonna experience him. I'm gonna run straight into his presence. I will not recognize myself at the end of this year because I will become so much closer to God. If that's you, I just want you to prepare your heart and when we get ready to pray in a moment, I just want that to be your prayer. God, I'm just going to get close to you. And while you're preparing your heart, I want to talk to someone else that if you're honest, maybe you're watching online, maybe you're here. Maybe that second one, the tenacity of God. You're not close to him, but it's time to make a decision. You don't have to believe beyond any doubt, but can you believe beyond a reasonable doubt? Do you know enough to make a good decision? What a wonderful way to start your new year and start getting closer to God than by drawing close to Him. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer. You don't have to say it exactly like I do. I just want to help get you started. And maybe throughout this entire worship song, you just need to have a really long, really honest conversation with God. But I want to help you start that conversation of coming close to Him. And say it with me like this. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Right now, Jesus, come into my life. Wash away all my sin. I come close to you in Jesus' name. Now, God, I just, I feel a sense in this place that you are so longing for moments like this. Moments when all distractions are gone and our focus is on you. So that maybe, just maybe, in the very depths of our heart, we can hear the whisper of love that you have for us. As we worship you in this moment, visit us. Help us, Lord, to make a decision that this year we're going to run after you. We're going to experience your love like never before. And no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we're going to find our stability in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me all over the house this morning? We're going to sing a song that many of you know. And maybe this is your moment. You just need to commit this year, 2021. This is the year. This is the year that I'm going to get closer to God than ever before. And that may look different for every one of us. I don't know what your next step may be, but whatever that is, God, whatever you bring, whatever comes, I'm going to run after you. Let's worship God together this morning.